Good morning. Good morning. Is it a good morning? Is it a blessed morning? Can you hear me? Yes. Praise the Lord then. Praise Him. It's a good morning, and we know who's in control. Then we come in and we can praise the Lord. We can praise Him where we are. We can praise Him for what He's going to do. We can praise Him because He's God all by Himself. We can praise Him because He created the heavens. We can praise Him because He designed us to give Him glory, to bring Him glory. Do you know what you've been created for? Well, are you going to invite him in this morning? Are you going to let him come in this morning? Is he not worthy to come in? Has he not been good to us? He's always good to us. But he tells us, let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So can I tell you, the trees are praising the Lord this morning. Can I tell you, the ocean is praising the Lord this morning. Can I tell you, the rain is about to come over the clouds. Thank you, Lord. And today we want to worship you at your feet, Lord. We bow before you, God, because you tell us that you are a king. So we come into this house this morning. We come before you, God, and we bow before the king this morning. We invite you into this service, God, because we have a desire that we want you here. We need you here. Yes. We desire that you be in this place today, God. But, Lord, we're telling you to have your way as you have been invited in. Move in this house from seat to seat, from heart to heart. Move, Lord. From minds to minds in the name of Jesus. Lord, let's glorify your presence in this place, God. Send your presence. 
Send that wind. Blow into us today, God. Let us not come in one way and leave without a change and a transformation. Because, God, we just want you to do it. Yes, God. Just do it, Lord. Whatever it is, God. Whatever is in us, God. Whatever is, is holding us. Whatever is keeping us. Whatever may be weighing us down in our minds and our minds. Lord, we ask that you would remove it. But God us the strength to lay it down before the King. We lay down and we cast aside every burden, every weight. We take off our busy, busy Martha hats. Yes. And we put on our Mary. Mary. As we get on our knees, we sit at your feet today, God. Because, God, we love you and we want to hear from you. You are our portion. You tell us that in your word. You are our portion, Lord. So, God, have your way in the service. And we want to thank you, Lord, for the shepherds of this house. We want to thank you for our pastors, Lord. Lord, send down a fresh anointing on them this morning, Lord. Fill them up, God, even more than even before, Lord. Give them strength for the journey, continuous journey, as they're faithful and diligent to come into this service. Each thank you, God. Sunday, to show up, God, faithfully on our behalf as they're teachers, laboring with us among the vineyard, Lord. Bless our pastors, bless their family, bless their house, bless everything, God, concerning them, Lord. Yes, Lord. And as our pastor, Jay-Z, is coming today to deliver a word, a mighty word, God, as she's been doing this series, Lord, Lord, bless her, fill her from up on high, yes, and do her with Holy Ghost power and dominion and authority, Lord. And as she's giving out her virtue to the people, Lord, Lord, fill her up with a double portion of your anointing today, Lord. Yes. Father God, we pray for those that could not be here today, Lord. You know where they are. You know the situation, the circumstances, where they are, where they're going. Through. Lord, touch them right now in Jesus. Name. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Meet them at the point of the cross, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Supply every need, God. Lift up every head that has been bowed, Lord. That they would see the glory of God that would come in and bring about change and transformation. Set free, deliver. Remove the bondages and the chains, Lord. Rip off the shackles, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, it's just one touch. If you did it for Saul, you can do it for them, Lord. If you show up for the woman of the well, you can do it for them, Lord. Yes, God. If you part of the Red Seas, you can do it for them, Lord. Meet them, Lord. We know that you're capable and you're able, Lord, to do all things well. And Lord, we thank you that it is finished. It was a finished work, God. So we stand today at the resurrection God in Christ Jesus. Because yes, God, God, you are reminding us that you got up off the cross. Off the cross. And on the third day you rose, God. You went down, but you brought us up today, Lord. And we just want to thank you in the name of Jesus. Have your way in this service, Lord. Write upon our hearts the epistles of the word today, God. That that word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our back. And we will give you the glory, honor, and praise and say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name that we pray. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, amen. 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 Lord, we thank you in the name of the Lord. We thank God for being in the house today. We thank God for each and every one of you that are here. We thank God for all of those that are coming in by social media. We just want to welcome you and just say, have your way, Holy Spirit, and move upon your people today. Right now, we want to take the time to... Um, ask that our praise and worship team will come forward at this time as we prepare our hearts to bless the Lord in song. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship. God is good. All the time. We bless him and we thank him for who he is. Um, before we start, there's a song I just need to get right, get right out. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the grave and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, okay. and every tongue confess that. 
I'm like, okay, it's he is faith. Lord. He's speaking in the atmosphere oh, yes. because he is the Lord, right? Yes. Amen. And so yes. everything that, because he is Lord, everything that we can do, we can do in Jesus' name according to the purpose and the plan of God. So we thank God that in Jesus' name, all things are possible. Right? So God is fighting for us. Anybody in the fight this morning? Amen. Yes. But you are not alone. He is fighting for you. He's doing the hard part. The thing you can't see, he's moving things. He's fighting a kingdom. He's fighting a kingdom of darkness, but he's pushing back the darkness. And he's lighting up his kingdom. And his kingdom cannot be shaken. Shout it out. Bless thanking God that in Jesus' name, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Yes, God. Amen.
that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated.
God, that we were created in his image to bring glory to his name. We're created to praise him. So we shouldn't have to be in a place where we're trying to figure out what we're here for. Amen. One of the primary goals and one of the primary reasons is because we were created to praise him, to worship him. We can't walk around bearing his image and not doing what we were created to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen, family. Amen. Well, I'm right. <laughs> I was having a good old time in that corner over there, me and the Lord. Sometimes you just got to go and just, just, just spend time. Just spend time. Amen. 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 Woo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to bless God. Because, as I said, He's just God. And He's good, right? Can you feel in here? Yeah. He's already here. Amen. He shows up when He's in my It's just me and I'm here to celebrate the way He's here this morning. I want to take an opportunity to see if we have any first-time visitors in the house today. If you're a first-time visitor, please stand. We just want to acknowledge you. Amen. 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 She's like, I'm going to pull her up, too. She's like, I don't want to get up. This is okay to just say we like. If you would just tell us who you are, who invited you, we just want to take an opportunity to acknowledge you. If you can give me a name. Amen. 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 And the young lady next to you. Hi, Mom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you here with us today. We thank God that you're coming in to worship with us. We pray that God will meet you right where you are in your seat today in Jesus' name. And at this time, Perfect World Ministries, we want to take the opportunity to do our vision statement. We are contemporary, but not compromised. We envision and experience a diverse, multicultural, worshiping community of spiritually mature believers leading others into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, producing healthy families and engaging in holistic ministries to develop a community spiritually and economically and impacting the world for the glory of God. And here at Perfect World Ministries, we say don't give up. Don't ever give up. You can. You can do all things through Christ Jesus who will strengthen you. Amen? And it's true. We can do all things. All things through Christ Jesus. We can't do it on our own. Because how many of y'all tried it and it just didn't work? Yes. We just made a muck of it. And, you know, we just kept trying and trying. But it's something about when he's on the inside that he reminds us that we can do all things. Not oh. some things. Not a little thing. Oh. But we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And I think that's just such an encouragement. But that's the word of God. Amen. 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 And right now for our opportunity to give, um, we have our tithes and offering at this time. That if you would like to donate and give the tithes and offering and need an envelope, one of our watchmen can bring an envelope to you. We also have a receptacle in the back where we can place our tithes and offerings and the envelopes have been filled out. You can also mail them in because some people still use mail. Yes. And it's P.O. Box 823, Bear, Delaware, 19701. That's the P.O. Box, Perfect World Ministries is the church. And if you're paying online, it is perfectworldministries.org. You can also do your tithes and offering well. There, we want to also say that we know in the Bible, according to the word, he says, God loves a what? And he can see to the who? So. And we are sowing into fertile ground. Amen. We are sowing it into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. 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 And as the envelopes are being passed out, we also want to take this opportunity as Communion Sunday to prepare for our communion. And as we are sitting at this moment, we want to take the opportunity to just reflect on all we've seen and heard today and knowing how faithful the Lord is. This is a time where the Bible tells us that in the book of Corinthians, Paul was saying, let a man examine themselves to see if he's worthy and that he's partaking of the Lord's Supper for the communion in a worthy manner. We've all heard that, let us examine ourselves, but today I wanted to take an opportunity as we prepare for our communion to just teach for a second and share something with you. I actually looked at communion and what Jesus did with his disciples coming out of the book of Matthew. And it was a time where Jesus was preparing, as we all know, the Passover supper with his disciples. And he 
ask one of his disciples and a few of them to go and find this location, this place that has already been prepared. So we know that there's a prepared place that they had <coughs> that they would meet and they would have this supper. That's right. On the night that he was to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. And as they met and the instructions were followed out, when they met in this room, which was an upper room, there was a Passover meal that was prepared. And as the Passover meal was prepared, we know that Jesus took two elements off the table, one being bread and the other one being a cup of wine. But when I looked at this in Matthew, it says that as they were preparing and the Lord had prepared the table, right prior to that, Jesus, in the middle of the meal, because before the actual communion took place, they were having a meal, that Jesus looked and he said, one of you is about to betray you. Well, and, of course, the disciples were caught off guard by the statement. But as he said, none of you are about to betray me, each one of the disciples said, is it I? Is it I, Lord? They acknowledged him as Lord. Is it I, Lord? But it was something that when it came down to Judas, he said, Rabbi, is it I? So, in looking at that and looking and searching and seeing that, he said, Rabbi. Now, everyone else said, Lord. So when we look at this statement and we're talking about Lord, did you make him Lord over your life? Well, when you come to the table of come on. And that's the question that I believe he's asking us today. Did you make him Lord? Or do you look at this as just a common meal, a common practice, Jeez. as Judas did? That's good. So as this was taking place, Jesus told Judas, as you have said. But see, this was the examination part for each and every one of us this today, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians where Paul is speaking, let a man examine himself. Yes. Yes. So because they were sorrowful, the disciples, it is I, is it I? This is our opportunity to examine himself. Because Jesus gives us the opportunity to come together at the dinner table to check our own hearts, yes. to check our own souls, yes. to see if there's anything else in us that we're sorrowful, that we, you know, need forgiveness. This is the time that when we come together that we do that. So he was asking the question, and they gave an answer. So as it goes on, and it says that Judas was the one that betrayed him, and he was. But it also gave Judas the opportunity to repent, because we never really looked at, you know, he never had an opportunity to repent. There it is. But see, he's asking each and every one of us today during our communion service, do you need to repent, or is there anything you right. need to repent of? He That's gives right. us the opportunity as he was giving this to Judas. So that is, let a man examine himself. Yes, Lord. But to give you a little bit more before we start, in Jewish tradition, there's a time where a Jewish young man, when he's asking for a hand in marriage, in an engagement, he would go to the proposed young lady and he would bring a cup of wine. He would give the wine to her, but before he did, he would say to her, this is my life in this cup. This is my blood in this cup. This is everything that I have in this cup. I'm giving it to you. That, instead of being the ring, would be the proposal. And in return, if she accepted the cup, she would drink from the cup. That was her way of saying, I accept right. what you have requested. Right. I accept what you have given me. So in that part, once she drinks, that sealed the contract, because it was a contract. Yes. We don't have that contract with God. We have a covenant with the Father. Thank you. But this is a symbol of what took place as an exchange with the fiancé and the fiancé, or the bride-to-be. But this also symbolizes Christ as being the groomsman who did the proposal, and then the church being us as the bride. So that means we entered into a marriage covenant with the Father when we said yes. Yes. And we come into the church today to partake of communion. So it just gives you a better understanding of why we are here and what are we doing. We've entered into a covenant with the Father through his blood. Amen? Amen. So it goes on to say in Matthew that as they were eating, that Jesus had taken the cup. Can I please have one? that Jesus had taken the cup and the bread. 
And he said, he took the bread. He blessed the bread. Yes. And he broke it. Yes, Lord. And he gave it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. You may take and eat. And there shortly after, This is the new covenant, my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness and the remissions of your sins. You may take and you may drink. And as it states in the Corinthians, for often as you do this, you partake of this cup and eat of this bread. You do this in the return of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 We thank God for his word. We thank God for just enlightening us and giving us more insight because he's good. Amen? How many of you ready for the word? Yeah! Yes. Because not only is he the bread of life that gives life and that sustains life, he's also the bread of life that speaks because the word speaks. Amen? Amen. So let us prepare our hearts and our mind even more to receive the word of God. Because I'm excited about what he's doing through his series and our Pastor Casey. And if you would just take a warm moment to just welcome Pastor Tacey as she brings forth the word. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings to everyone. We thank God for each and every one of you that is here today, each and every one, and we bless God for you. I want to get right into the word, so um, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise, God. We thank you for the opportunity uh, to come into a place of worship where we can assemble together to collectively lift up your name and praise it in worship, where we as the body of Christ come to uh, have ourselves filled with your word and with your instruction and, and uh, steered in the right direction by your correction where we have the opportunity where iron will sharpen iron and where we can uh, get what we need in order that we can go forth and share this good news, this gospel of Jesus Christ. So Lord, as we share this word today, I prepare that every heart, mind, and spirit will receive the seed of the word and that you will meet each and every one at their place of need and their place of petition today, God. For Lord, you said in your word, if we seek you with our whole heart, we will find you. So God, we are searching and seeking. We're desirous of your presence and we desire to hear from you today. So God, have your way that I decrease and you increase within me that I will convey the words from your heart to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I've been sharing for the entire year a series called Processor Outcome. And uh, we were studying the story of Gideon. We've been on this for a number of months now. And the one thing that we're certain of is that along our journey of elevation and even our journey of life is that the process has, is what we are to engage in and what we are to uh, cooperate with God in because the outcome has already been firmly decided by God. And so it's not up to us to make things happen, but it's up to us to move with God in order that things happen according to his purpose and plan. God is not going to force us. He's not going to manipulate us. He's not going to control us. He's mm. not going to try to trick us, and mm. nor will he deceive us into living a life upright before him. 
But God will lead us, and God will guide us, and God will chastise us, yes. and God will speak into us, yeah. and God will let us know that he is with us, and God will empower us, and God will equip us, and God will deliver us, yeah. and God will be present with us always. But the choice to cooperate with his purpose and plan is totally and completely up to us. Mm. Now he may shut some doors along the way to yeah. try to to try to refocus you and cause yeah. you to recalibrate. Come on. He might move some things out of your way to allow you to push forward. Come he on. may allow you to uh, be in the valley at some point, and you might even be on the mountaintop. But Come God on. is with you no matter where you Come are. On. He's firmly in control of everything that is going on in the earth, outside of the earth, well. and anything beyond what we even know from time into eternity. So we ought to bless God. Because he knows well what he wants from us, what he wants to do through us. And so it is ours to line up with the purpose and the plan of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so it's amazing to me that as I have studied this um, story of Gideon, I've been in Judges with you for a number of months now. And it's amazing to me that even as I have read this story numerous times throughout my walk, and we have heard it preached in many different um, places and, you know, um, contexts, but the awesome thing about God is at the particular time that we need it, God will make that word be exactly what needs to speak to us. And so I'm so grateful for, to God because even as I study it out and I believe God is going in one direction, I can hear God speak in another. And so I'm excited about what God does because I'm excited to wait and hear what he has instructed me to give to you. Because even as I'm studying it, he's giving it to me as well. And I'm grateful for that because I've seen this thing called process in a way that I have not seen it with the detail that I've seen it before. And so God is awesome in that. So the next time I find myself in the valley or facing something hard or something difficult, I know how to listen for the voice of the Father to understand what my portion of the instruction is so that I can do that part and not try to do his. So I can stay out of his way and not get in my own and trip myself up. And I don't have to sabotage myself because I can trust that the outcome has been firmly decided by God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But there's some things along this process. Now, we have already gotten to the victorious part. We've gotten to the celebration. We've gotten to the deliverance of the people of Israel from their oppressors, the Midianites. God has done everything that he promised. And when I was before you last, it was process or outcome, pronouncement versus practice. And that simply means you have to be... Be sure that what God says is what you are doing. Don't don't proclaim one thing and then live another thing. Well, all right, come on. Well, keep that same energy. Because when we do, then we cause those who are observing us as believers to be very totally confused and befuddled by, well, what is this thing you say versus this thing you do? Come on. Well. And we spoke last time, I was before you, about Gideon having gone through all of that. God moved in such miraculous ways, unprecedented ways. He did things that we know is not possible unless God intervened. Unless his hand was upon it, it would never happen. Yes. And he gets to the end of that thing. And, and the victory, the people being grateful, and the people shouting, and he decides that he wants to receive gold from the spoils, and he mm. wants to take that gold, and he wants to craft an ephod, which is a garment solely for the high priest. Yes. And the sad reality of it all is after all of that, the very thing, the very deliverer that God used was the very deliverer that so it kind of planted that seed to lead them right back into bondage and idolatry again. My God. And I want to pick up there. And every time I think I'm getting to the end, God shows me something else. I'm just going to go with God and Amen. say what God says to say. Amen. 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 So if you will turn with me to Judges 9. Judges chapter 9. Let me go back one little bit. Okay. Now, we're picking up at the end of um, eight. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't get past this part because God wants to um, 
share some things. But so we're gonna go back a little bit to eight. And I just wanna catch you up to speed on what has happened. So we're gonna start at verse 29. Jerubbabel, the son of Joash, that's the name they gave Gideon because he pulled down the altars of Baal. He went and lived in his own house. Now Gideon had 70 sons, his own offspring. Make note, for he had many wives. And his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, and he called his name Abimelech, which means my father is king. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash, his father, at Ophrah of the Abrezites. Verse 33. As soon as Gideon died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. There it is. As soon as he died. There we go. There it is. As soon as he died. <laughs> the people of Israel turned against and whored after the Baals, and made Baal Berith their God. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. My God. It's a discipline. As soon as Gideon died. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now he was the instrument. He was the tool. He was the vessel that God used to bring about deliverance. But as soon as he died, the people became amnesiacs again. They forgot again. The word says that. I didn't say it. Verse 34, the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, Jesus. who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. Now, when you look at different translations, if you look at the New Revised Standard, it says the people did not, the people didn't exhibit loyalty either. Yeah. But I want to look at this part right here where the people forgot. Yeah. Uh -oh. If you want a title for today, it's Process or Outcome, The Danger of Forgetting. Uh -oh. <laughs> Process or Outcome, The Danger of Forgetting. So, the word tells us that Gideon died a ripe old age, a good old age. Mm -hmm. And the land was at rest for 40 years. Okay, and if you go back to verse 28, Midian was subdued before the people of Israel and they raised their heads no more and the land had rest for 40 years in the days of Gideon. But as soon as Gideon died, the people forgot. And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow, as soon as Gideon died, then everything just goes back to the slippery slope of idolatry and Baal worship and uh, pagan worship. And the people of Israel didn't remember God, they forgot. And here's my thing, I thought about this. You know, we know that 40 represents a generation and so I begin to ask questions of the text. I'm like, well, what happened in 40 years that Israel will forget what God did for them? And I started thinking about that. And I tried to bring it to, you know, like a real time understanding, you know. Um, I thought about, hmm. So they were under oppression for seven years. And God raised up Gideon to deliver them. So I thought back, I said, okay, but just, let's just say, for instance, and I'm just using this as a tool to try to, to, to get you to understand why I asked that question. So let's just say that around the time of the oppression, you were 30-ish years old. We got some 30-ish year old people in this house right now, right? And we had some 20-ish year old people. And I thought about that, so I'm thinking, wow, if this person was 30-ish when they were under oppression, when the oppression began, then they endured seven years of oppression. And then I thought about, okay, during that, after that, God raised Gideon up, and after God raised Gideon up, then there was 40 years of rest. So by the time all of that was set, said and done, you are now 70-ish. And then I started looking back. 
So if you were 20-ish and you went through that time, by the time all was said and done, you were 60-ish. If you were 15-ish, by the time everything was said and done, you were, you were 55-ish. If you were 10-ish, then you were 50-ish. If you were 5-ish, then you were 45-ish. But if you were born after the seven years, you only know peace. Mm. Well, mm. Wow. that's good. Mm. Mm. That's good. There's a danger in forgetting people of God. Mm. And I'm not talking about forgetting where the, the, the things that you've been through so much as I'm, I'm saying forgetting what God has done for you yes. while you were going through. Mm. Okay? And so, you know, think about this. So, you've now had some grandparents, some parents, and some grandchildren, and potentially, because of how they married during that time, some great-grandchildren. Yes. So you have about five, four or five generations, and those last few generations were born and raised in peace. They don't know the oppression. They don't know the struggle. They don't know the hardship. They don't know that you had to hide in the in the in the in the vine press, mm. um, trying to, to to sift the wheat because they were sucking up the oppressor was taking everything from you. They didn't know how many of your those before them that actually died and those who were tortured and those who were abused. They didn't know that your family's land was taken and they didn't understand that the land that you now stand on that you didn't even possess at that time because it was taken away from you. So now, we look at what's happening. And I thought about that, and I'm like, wow, God. I said, because there's a danger in forgetting, because there were adults who were under that oppression. But you know what? We think about it now. Understand the human nature. If you were 15 or 10 or 5, you could have been so traumatized, you need to pack that away somewhere. You don't even understand what was going on. All you knew was your childhood was filled with fear mm -hmm. and anxiety mm -hmm. and wondering what's going to happen next. But if you were 40-ish, you understood it well. Mm -hmm. And you saw God's hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you understood who he used to help deliver you. You saw that he raised Gideon up. You knew Gideon because guess what? You were in the same community with Gideon. You understood, you knew his mom and his dad. And so God used him to raise him up in order that you all would come out from under the yoke of bondage. And so they were painfully aware because they witnessed and experienced the Midianite ex oppression. They witnessed and heard how God used Gideon to liberate them, and they became the beneficiaries of Gideon's yes to God, and God's steadfast love for them because God heard their cry. Yes? So they knew, they knew this. And guess what? If you were around during that time, you knew what God required of you because God don't just not just blindly do things without letting you know what he desires and what he requires. Mm -hmm. And so here's the thing. It was the responsibility of those older ones to teach the younger ones, to teach the ones who weren't even in existence at the time this was happening, what the Lord said, what the Lord did, how God moved, who he used, what he requires. There's a danger in forgetting. Come on. Come on. There's a danger in forgetting. Jesus. You know, we, in this culture, we want to just be over stuff. We forget stuff so easily. What's popping and hot right now, by the time we leave church, won't matter to most people. Yes. Tell it. There came a time that Mm. By the timing of their existence, they didn't even know what happened. Mm. So they don't even know what oppression and hardship is. But the generations who preceded them absolutely knew. And those who walked around with no clue, walked around with the liberties and the freedoms that were fought on the battlefield with a horn and with a light and with 300 men and one willing leader yeah. who saw himself as, Lord, if you're going to have me do this, please give me some signs. If you go back to Deuteronomy in chapter 4, there is a um, instruction of God. He says, he says, in these words that I command you, 
today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand that they shall be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. Come on. It's your responsibility to never forget what God has done Amen. and to teach those that come behind and to tell the tale of what he did in the wilderness, how he moved and who he used and what he did. You don't let this generation come up thinking that God is not real, that God doesn't exist, that this is a fairy tale, this is no fable, this is truth. Come on, come on. There's a danger in forgetting. There is a danger. There is a danger in forgetting. Because we have so many walking around not even understanding how to fight. You can't come, you can't come out of a paper bag because you don't understand the power in the name of Jesus. You won't open your mouth and call on his name. You won't go on your face and fast and pray. You won't turn down your plate. You won't sow. You won't get to where you need to go because you don't understand. You don't know. You have not been taught. Wow. Mm. There's a danger in danger. forgiving. We can't become so progressive and so sophisticated mm. that we forgot where God brought us mm. from and how he did it mm. and the tools he used and the instruments mm. he used. Mm. We can't do that. Mm. We can't afford. That's not a luxury we can afford. Oof. There's a danger in forgetting. Mm. You get so far away, you start picking up other things ah, mm, to okay. help you navigate through yeah. life. Yeah. And all of those things are empty, yeah. and all of those things are temporary, yeah. and all of those things are flawed, yeah. and all of those things will rot, yeah. and all of those yeah. things will rust, yeah. and all of those things will soon be gone. Yeah. They will not stand the test of eternity. There's a danger in forgetting. There's a danger in forgetting. And so what if you sound like the preachy auntie or uncle. What if, so what if you sound like that crazy cultish whoever that they want to call you? Mm. Live it up right before them and speak the word. Live it up right before them and speak the word. Well, it's not always in what you say. It's how you show. Show up. How do you treat them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you conduct yourself when things don't go your way? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not always us coming and sh shaking and waving a Bible in somebody's face yeah. or giving them tracts. It's all in about how you live. Yeah. Come, on, Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes. There's a danger in forgetting. Yeah. Because guess what? For those who were born after, in, in the time of peace, after all of this was done, they had no point of reference. No point of reference, and they had no reverence. Mm. <laughs> because that's the God you know about. All I know is I'm here and I'm doing me. Uh -huh. mm. Don't even understand that if you didn't go through it, yep. if somebody didn't suffer it, yeah. well, you yeah. wouldn't even yeah. be here. Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't be having this conversation oh right my now. God. There's a danger in forgetting. Yeah. And so we don't ever want to forget God. We don't want to forget who God is. No. We don't want to forget what God promised. We don't want to get, forget what God requires. We don't want to forget what God is doing and what God has done. Yes. We want to live out loud. And when I say loud, I don't mean boisterous and repelling. Yes. I'm not saying that, but just, just be, just stand fast in your faith. All right. Just live it out. Yes. Yes. Just live it out. Not perfect. Not, not one time did you hear me say perfect. Well, uh, but when you're wrong, right. say I'm sorry. Come on. When you're messed up, say it was me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Own what you do. Yeah. Be humble. When you yeah. walk in a room, stop. Don't be all grand. You ain't got to be all grand and pious and, and, and walking around like you above anybody. We're not flooded into the room. We're walking just like everybody else. <laughs> There's a danger in forgetting. Come on. Bars. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, how will they know unless we live it before them? My God. How will they know unless we teach it? How will they know unless we tell them the things that God has done? There's a danger in forgetting. Now, mind you, there are some things that we've picked up down through the years that are so traditional, they make the word of God of no effect. 
Come on. You're not holy if you don't wear a dress with a 50 foot train. Uh, mm. That's, we don't need to use that. Yeah. Who is in your heart? Yeah. And, and, you, and, and you're not a Christian if, you, if, if, if your Bible is not like big and, and heavy and weighty and you got all of these earmarks and marks in What does that have to do with anything? If it ain't written in here, it don't mean nothing. I can mark this up day and night and not live one word of it. Right. I can know it and not live one word of right. it. Right. Right. Go off. Right. You know that there are people who read the word just to have an argument to yes. make a point? Yes. 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 Nobody should be able to say nothing to you about the word of God mm -hmm. and you can't respond. I didn't say argue. I didn't say retort. I didn't say clap back. I said respond. <laughs> Visual clap back. You got to know your word. Yes. There were people who literally study the Christian Bible who are of other faith and they wait for the opportunity yep. to engage you and to slash you to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's right. There's a danger in forgetting. You know that's the Study. There's a danger in forgetting. We are not some exclusive club. Yep. God did not create us to be exclusive. He created us to go out and tell this word, share this gospel, share our testimony, talk about what God has done, honor God, bless God, worship God. He didn't say go slapping people across the head with the Bible, giving them a concussion. Now they don't even know what you're talking about anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. Well. And, and here's the sad part. The bad testimony of a handful of Christians have turned so many people away from the church. There's a danger in forgetting what God has done. You know, you remember the time when you was in the muck and mire, and you knew that if God didn't step in, it was over for you. Over. It, it was done. Right. That's right. And when he stepped in, and when he showed up, and you know you was running dirty, yes. and you know you were running wrong, yep. and he loved you anyway, yep. and he cleaned you up, and he embraced you, and he welcomed you in, and he spread his love upon you. And then he sent the people of God right next to you to love on you, and then he sent you right next to you. show steadfast love to the family of Jerubel. Depending on what translation you read, they did not exhibit loyalty according to the New Revised Standard translation, mm -hmm. and they failed to show kindness according to the New International Version. Yes. But let me just tell you this. Whatever you do for God, Do it because he asked you to. Do it because you honor him. Do it because you love him. Do it because you worship him in obedience. Don't ever do something for God for the applause of people. Don't ever do something for God for, for the, the, uh, uh, the people to be happy with you. Do it for God because it's your act of worship. People forget. Mm. People 
people turn. People will ignore you. So if you want to do it, do it for his glory and not your own. Don't self-promote. All that they saw, all that they witnessed, and all that they benefited from. They didn't show his family any type of loyalty, any type of kindness, or any type of love. And a lot of people get stuck and they get caught up because when they do something, believers do something in the church and the people act unbecoming, now you're mad at God. Don't be mad at God because the people acting crazy. Be glad that God called your name and chose you to do this thing. He put your hands to work in this area of the vineyard. But when you start looking around at people, that's the quickest way you can get tripped up. And now you don't want to work in your ministry no more because somebody didn't say thank you or they weren't gracious to you. Or they My God. You. If you're going to do this thing, this is not for the faint of heart. Because I tell you what, if I did it for the applause, I've been going a long time ago. <laughs> So here, they have gotten to a place of freedom. And they've gotten to a place of liberty. And they've gotten to a place of peace. But as soon as Gideon died, they forgot. There's a danger in forgetting. Let's look at Nine, Judges nine. Now Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem to his mother's relatives and said to them, and the whole clan of his mother's family, say in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubbaal rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and flesh. Mm. Now remember we just read, Gideon had 70 sons, but he had a son named Abimelech by one of the concubines. So as soon as his father died, he began to self-promote. Mm. He began to politic. He began to take a survey of the people. He began to attempt to assume a position and a role that God did not call for. Now you want to be ruler. Did God say king to you? Hmm. The king of kings, did he say king to you? Hmm. And so now you're taking the survey. And you are preparing and positioning yourself to elevate yourself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, there's a danger in forgetting. Because maybe had somebody been tent teaching and, 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 and demonstrating and talking about what God had done, this young man would have gotten this idea that he's, he's now next in line. Uh -huh. There's a danger in forgetting. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Thank and so now, what does he do? He goes out and he begins to speak to the people. And I know I'm not going to finish the day, but I'm going to lay this ground, this foundation for you. He goes to speak to the people, and he appeals to them based upon the fact that they, they, they're, they're kin. You. So you're building an alliance because my mom and your mom were sisters, or whatever the case may be. You're building an alliance to go and do something that God did not ordain. Because somebody, somebody forgot to tell you what the real deal is. There's a danger in forgetting. And so he goes out, and now he's trying to assume this position. And so he goes to his mother's relatives, and they spoke all of the words to the leaders of Shechem, and now their hearts are inclined to follow him. There's a danger in forgetting, because you need the anointing of God to assume this role in this position. You need God to be the one who has said, this is what's going to happen with the people. He decided he's going to go off and do his own thing. And now he has already enlisted the people to become a part of this. There is a danger in forgetting people of God. And they said, okay, he's our brother. But what you need to be asking 
Oof. They said, he is our brother. And then, now we, we already talked about the, the, um, the, um, the, the 1,700 shekels of gold that Gideon used to create that ephod. Well, now these people have gone into their treasury in the house of Baal Barith, their pagan god, and they come out with 17 shekels of silver. And Abimelech used the, sh the silver to hire worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's going gangster. Show. Sure. Now he got a mind. Show. Sure. He is. This is murder for hire. Listen to this. Murder for hire. Yes. This is the word. Read it. Mm. And he went to his father's house at Oprah and killed his brothers, yeah. the sons of Judah, about seventy men on one stone. Murder for hire. There's a danger in forgetting. People want to self-promote. They come with uh, ungodly, un, not unsanctioned motives, trying to rise to a platform and a level that God never said. And now you go and you make an alliance with people just because you share blood and you say to them that I should be the one to lead you. And they, in ignorance, say, yes, what did I say about, remember what you need to do when somebody makes a request of you? You need to examine this situation. And just because they're related, yes. they align themselves with him, and then they go to the temple of a pagan God. That should have been enough right there to say, wait a minute, hold up. Uh -huh. 17 shekels of silver to hire men to kill your family so that you can be king. There's a danger in forgetting. Jesus. And you know what? I'm going to stop right there. Because hmm. we won't go too fast in this. Later. Because we Time. need to understand what God is saying, what God is doing, and how God is moving. We need to understand, are we moving with God or are we moving with others? Have we aligned ourselves with people just because we're familiar with them or we're related to them because that's your cousin on your daddy's side and they got this good idea to go do this? Did you pray? Did you fast? Did you seek God? Where are they standing? Who are they trusting? Who are they believing? Where are they coming from? Who sent them? Who are you at the there's a danger in forgetting. And what blood will be shed because you failed to seek God? My God. Now that might not be like a modern day hit, <laughs> but who will be led astray because of your behavior, because of your good idea? Because of your aligning with someone who's wow. living contrary to who you say you belong to. Wow. Mm. There's a danger in forgetting. Do y'all hear that? Yes, ma'am. I really pray that you sit with God and hear God. I pray that you will ask the Holy Spirit to bring back to your remembrance what God said concerning you. Who did he say that you are? Why did he say that you're here? Who did he say should come alongside? And remember, we can't forget what we came out of yes, and how God brought us out. Because then we forget and we begin to think that it's us and it's not him. It's all him. It's all him. And so I'm going to leave that here today. We're going to come back to this story because it has so many twists and turns. But I pray that if you've forgotten, that you will go back before the Father and you will allow him to bring back to your remembrance all those things. Everything that got in your way, everybody that got in your ear, everything that sort of got, got you off track. Remember. Remember God. Remember what he did. Remember how he's moving. Remember who God used. Yes. Remember what God said. Because the one thing that I know for sure is this. God is ultimately and completely in control of it all. And he is 100% faithful. Let us pray.
God, our Father, we thank you that we've made a decision not to forget the things that you have said, not to forget the things that you desire, and not to forget the things that you require. Lord, we thank you that when we look back, we see your hand upon it all. We see how you have delivered us. We see how you have sustained us. We see how you have saved us. We see how you have redirected us. We see how you have closed doors that didn't need to be opened, and you opened doors that you wanted open, God. Lord, we never want to forget everything that you've shown us, everything that you've done. And Lord, we want to tell others about your goodness. So Lord, let us never forget. Let us never forget Calvary. Let us never forget the Holy Spirit. Let us never forget anything that you've ordained in our lives. Let us be about your business. Let us stop being so easily distracted by things going on around us. Let us stop falling into uh, the flow of what's going on in our culture. Let us be okay with being peculiar and different. Let us stand for truth and stand for what is right. And along the way, God, allow us to tell this good news. To call someone to want to know, what, what can I do to be saved? What, what can I do to be a part of the body? So, Lord, as we leave this place, we're never ever in your presence. Help us to remember and never to forget. Help us to share the goodness of God with those that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of praise.